and we are live. Oh yes, we are live. Yes, we are live. Happy Friday, happy Friday, guys. Uh, <laughs> welcome, welcome back, welcome back uh, to another episode of VCTV, which is the Venture Capital TV. It's from La Chokan. I see all happy smiling faces. I'm very excited. It's Friday. And uh, I've got my friends and my speakers and investors. So we have uh, Vandana, we have Kartik, we have Saurav. Saurav, I don't see your name though, but anyways, and Gary. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and today we're going to discuss about uh, 5G and IoT, Internet of Things. It's a very technical topic, but we're going to make sure we give, make it a little, little fun, you know, for a Friday, for a Friday evening here in Singapore. So yes, that's and today I'm joined here by my co-moderator from all the way from Russia, Maxim Besnov. So yeah. yeah, hi everyone. I'm happy to see everyone yeah. from this show and be ready to discuss and some giving some new insights. Thank yes. you, Sonia. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. And he's got questions for all the speakers. Awesome. Fantastic. Uh, so, by the way, my name is Sunny Mohanty, as all, all of you, the speakers know, but just for the viewers, I'm the regional director. I represent La Chokin, and I've been hosting VCTV. It's been over a year now. It feels like over years, decades, but it's just been over a year. And that's uh, that's about me and that's about VCTV, a platform where we connect speakers uh, who are investors, uh, can be startup founders, influencers in that particular field, so everybody has a chance to speak about that project. So yes, that's VCTV. Um, okay, let's start with some introductions for, for those who may not know um, all of you today. So let's start with you, Vandana, with your uh, background and your intro. Thank you. Yeah, uh, hi everyone and happy Friday and nice to see all of you here again. And thank you for having me here. Hi Gary, nice to see you after so long. Uh, and um, uh, so, uh, you know, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I was in Singapore and Jakarta for 15 years in investment banking. I had my own family office fund there. This is my sixth year back in India. I did some investments. Then I went back to advisory. Currently, I'm connected with 200 investors globally and we pick up global deals. We are a global entity. Um, uh, we are sector agnostic. Typically, we pick up $1 million to $25 million. And um, I am signing in from Gurgaon, India. Fantastic. And Vandana, always love to have you on VCTV. And welcome Thank back. You. So next, Thanks. I have Katek. Katek, hope everything goes well. You don't disappear after the introductions. Welcome uh, back. I've taken an annual subscription and exemption from the middle for uh, StreamYard. So I'll be here for a year. Uh, I represent Middle East. I'm from Dubai and represent a couple of family offices based in the UK. Uh, we see fund based out of Saudi and my own investment firm, which is Idea Factory. I am a retailer by profession as well. So that's multiple hats that I wear. And being a Friday, I'm here to discuss something interesting on Internet of Things. Uh, in terms of disclaimer, I have an investment in the Internet of Things uh, application based out of UAE, primarily into wireless health monitoring and into uh, remote charging of uh, vehicles. Fantastic. Karthik, multiple hats. A lot of insights coming from here. Thank you, Karthik. Uh, so, Rab, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, Sunny. Uh, because of you, I removed that, you know. <laughs> okay, guys. I am Dr. Saurabh Bhatia from Pune, India. I run an, inter an investment advisory firm, and I am a venture partner with Our Ventures. We uh, help startups raise funds, uh, usually from about half a million to $25 million. And currently, we are doing about eight companies, uh, which I'll talk about if I get a chance. So thank you. That's about it. Absolutely. And also, uh, Saurabh is the MBBS. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I'm a medical doctor. <laughs> So last but not least, we have Gary Fowler. Hi, Gary. And we don't have that same kind of background today. Gary's going to show us something different. I mean, good way. So Gary, welcome, welcome to VCTV. Happy Friday. Yeah, that's great. It's a family Friday. You know, it's nice yes. to be here. Yes. <laughs> so How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm really good. Actually, I am at the very bottom of uh, Florida right now. I'm in the Florida Keys. 
So I actually came down for a little, uh, uh, for a week or so. Anyhow, my name is Gary Fowler. I'm a serial entrepreneur and investor. It's great to be here and see all my friends and smiling faces. Uh, I've done 17 companies. I've been involved in two unicorns. I was on the original management team at Click Software, sold the Salesforce for 1.35 billion, and also Eva.ai, a premier AI HR tech company out of Silicon Valley. Uh, a billionaire David Yang is my partner in that company. We're one of the top 10 AI HR tech companies in the world today and just love it. It seems like uh, yesterday, but it was literally five years ago, like today, five years ago that we started the company. So I also am the CEO, president, and co-founder of GST Get Shit Done Venture Studios, a premier AI vent and quantum venture studio that goes around the world looking for incredible AI and quantum companies. And literally today we are in Nigeria. My partner is there right now for a week uh, in Africa. And then we go to Dubai next. Ah, interesting. Nigeria, Dubai, and Kartik is based in Dubai. So, <laughs> yeah, we could set up a meeting, Kartik, with my partner. He's going to be there, lovely, lovely. 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 there next week. Happy but when is this event just coming over to Singapore? Uh, you know, soon. Um, soon. Soon. So we'll be over there. Is it open to come now, Sunny? Well, it's open to come, but there's a quarantine for 14 days, I guess, in a hotel. <laughs> well, that kind of knocks it out, yeah. I know, I know, but it's open. But at least it's not time. like Canada. You get $2,000 that come, if you come in the country. You get the quarantine and you go into a government place and you pay $2,000. So. Wow. But soon it'll be over. We're coming down the, you know, we're coming around the corner in this thing. Absolutely. It'll be over. Great, 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 great. So today, again, very technical topic, but we're going to make it light for all the viewers. So imagine a world where car accidents are a thing of the past, where chronic health conditions like diabetes are managed 24 by 7 without blood, sugar, highs and lows, where smart homes unlock doors with a face scan and then automatically adjust lighting and temperature and even order groceries for delivery before you run out of your milk. So we are on the brink of an exciting leap in innovation that is changing the very fabric of our society. 5G and IoT technology is more than just a new generation of wireless technology. It represents a fundamental change in the mobile ecosystem, unleashing a powerful combination of extraordinary speed, expanded bandwidth, low latency, and increased power efficiency that is driving billions more connections in the next five to 10 years and changing our world. So yes, so let's discuss what is 5G? How is 5G changing internet of things? How it's affecting our lives um, in this digital world that we live in, right? Especially after the pandemic, I think it's even with the digital acceleration, 5G uh, and IoT ha have a lot of influence the way we work. So talking about that, the only question is, how's IoT, Internet of Things, and 5G changing people's lives? Just the opening remarks. Avandana, over to you. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for the question. So um, 5G will do much more than significantly improving the network connection. Uh, it provides new opportunities, enables us to deliver groundbreaking solutions that reach across society. Uh, imagine billions of connected devices gathering and sharing information in real time to reduce road accidents or life-saving applications that can take, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, flight to lag-free guaranteed connections or production lines so predictive that they can prevent interruptions well before they occur. So 5G runs on the same radio frequencies that are currently being used for smartphone on Wi-Fi networks and in satellite communication, but it enables uh, technology to go a lot further. You know, beyond being able to uh, download a full length HD movie to your phone in seconds, even from a crowded stadium, 5G is really about connecting things everywhere uh, reliably without lag, so people can measure and understand and manage things in real time. And coming to uh, IoT, the Internet of Things refers to a system of interrelated, interconnected objects 
that are able to collect and transfer data over a wireless network without human intervention. Uh, the personal or business possibilities are endless. A thing can refer to a connected medical device, uh, a biochip uh, uh, transponder, uh, you know, a solar panel, a connected automobile with sensors that alerts the di uh, driver, uh, you know, uh, of a myriad of possible issues like fuel, tire, pressure, maintenance, or any object that is outfitted with sensors that has the ability to gather and transfer data over a network. Uh, today, businesses are motivated by IoT and the prospects, you know, prospects of increasing revenue, reducing operating costs, and improving efficiencies. Businesses also are driven uh, by a need of regulatory compliance. You know, regardless of the reasons, IoT devices uh, deployments provides the data and insights necessary to streamline workflows. Uh, visualize usage patterns, autom automate processes, uh, meet compliance requirements, and uh, compete more effectively in a changing business environment. So I feel uh, this is what 5G and IoT means, you know. And hence, we will be discussing further how it's going to affect our smart cities and our other cities as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Vandana, for those opening remarks. Next, I'd like to go with Sura. Thanks, Sunny. Uh, when you say IoT, or at least when I hear IoT, I have two things which come to my mind. Or I divide IoT world into one is where human interaction is required and it makes human life easy. And the other one is where the human interaction is not required and the IoT is used to control all the uh, some kind of machinery or some kind of factory or some kind of work. So uh, the areas where we talk of human intervention, uh, I am a little skeptical about those areas because of the intrusiveness of the technology and too much information going out and uh, people having a chance to look at, uh, look at the things that I do in various ways or order stuff on Amazon or whatever. So that area is one area which is personally, I'm not so comfortable, but uh, technology is overwhelming. Uh, what I'm more interested in is when the IoT is used to uh, improve, optimize the operations of various industrial areas or zones, whether it's from optimizing the use of electricity or the output of a, of a particular factory, those kind of things, they are definitely wonderful. And uh, I also feel that what they can do to optimize, uh, that is not possible to be done no matter how much uh, human beings you employ to do the same thing. So I think it brings both promise as well as a little bit of intrusiveness one has to guard against. So kind of a mixed bag for me. Right, right. Yeah, mixed bag. Thank you. Uh, Kartik. I would look at it a little differently. Maybe around 25 years ago, we started using internet for emails. Then we started using internet for browsing. We started using internet to communicate, to chat, to view content. We started using internet to shop. And now we're starting to use the internet to live. IoT primarily is about living on the net, managing everything that happens in your ecosystem, what we're used to do physically, managing it permanently on, on the web, managing your warehouse, managing your pets, managing your house managing your car, getting it serviced, getting your AC to switch on before you reach home, ordering your uh, groceries, or even managing your CCTV cameras to practically over a network that minimizes your involvement and maybe builds in a very strong artificial intelligence to a level where it doesn't even require your involvement. Once it gets used to understanding the way you live, it automatically reprograms itself. That is IoT. So it has its uh, benefits, it has its uh, disadvantages. It's about giving an access to another virtual human being to your way of living and to your ecosystem where it can be used for malicious use and as well as, as well as opening it up to being used by a lot of other people. So it opens up obtrusiveness, it opens up security issues, but at the same time, it significantly reduces the human effort involved. So it's about a sustainable tech. And in terms of 5G, I would say for IoT to be successful, 5G is the electricity or the fuel that's going to drive the engine. The better the connectivity, the better the network, the better the bridge between the virtual and the real world is going to drive efficiencies. And together, 
they are creating an entire ecosystem or an industrial circuit which is thriving primarily or 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 building a new economy which is completely different from what we are used to seeing we are used to seeing human involvement we are used to seeing machines and technology being governed by people iot and 5g is taking it completely into a virtual ecosystem where we may be relevant only to 5 to 10% of the operations so while it has its own benefits it, it comes in with a lot of disadvantages as well as we speak yeah i mean security is is one of those security privacy misuse data availability to others in fact the moment artificial intelligence while gary would know this more than anybody else but the moment artificial intelligence starts reprogramming itself and a probability of it malfunctioning would lead to disastrous impacts because it's reached inner echelons of your society which means everything we do from managing our house to our refrigerator to a car to our yeah. bedroom everything is being managed by a virtual human being that opens up a lot of privacy issues so yeah but yeah. it, it, but it, it definitely eases up a way of living and I, i would love somebody ordering my milk before i need to in 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 a place where i live with 50 degrees temperature i would want my car to be on before i can even reach the car if somebody offers me that level of comfort i would definitely love it absolutely absolutely yes totally agree thank you kartik uh, next carry yes yeah, so you know our lives have fundamentally changed and as this digital transformations upon us the internet of things becomes way more important so let's really look at two pillars or three pillars one is ai is the new electricity we've got the internet of things data is the fuel and 5g is a turbocharger so you know we just got to like you know I'm a country boy from pennsylvania if i said many times you know let's just keep it simple and the internet of things it's right but think about what's happening we are moving into a real time world every single thing around us we're going to be able to get information on a real time basis why in the world would you go to a doctor you go in for an exam you get uh, sarah would know you go into an exam once a year for a physical but then what happens the rest of that year what happens if you get cancer the next day and you don't go back to the doctor for another year so why would, wouldn't it be good to be able to understand instantly what's happening and to be able to course correct we do it with remote workforce management with employees the same thing why in the world would you want to have information and have a review that takes place once a year but the pro- the employee has a problem the next day after the review so it's about getting real time information i recently had samir sharma who's the uh, general manager for all iot for intel on my show and we got into some details think about cities how far back cities are red lights stop lights they're only changed every 8 years they're only reprogrammed every 8 years don't you think it makes sense with demographic shifts to have those iot devices to be able to be real time so tra- as traffic flows or patterns change they adjust they course correct emergencies course correct but we don't do it what we talked about fuel efficiency and think about things like smart buildings right with lights simple things like uh lights going on and off etc so we are going to we are in this incredible age and <clears throat> it's just right now in 100 years are going to say that this is the athens of the information age this is that time what we have is we've got to embrace it we understand that we're going to have a massive massive amount of data that's going to come out and i've said this many times too in our personal cloud today we have about 300,000 items which is bigger than the entire number of websites on the world wide web which was 257,000 in 1996 in 5 years it'll be because the internet of things in our own personal clouds it'll be 10 million items think about it it is infobesity how in the world are we going to be able to adjust there'll be two classes of people the people understand and no data and the people that don't so that that raises another problem the challenge you're right security is going to be paramount so the decentralized cybersecurity systems which are the next wave are going to be important then we've got quantum computers on top of that so imagine quantum ai in the internet of things how different is our life going to be yes absolutely 
so we, we can't have another topic to cover i would like with 5g iot quantum computing as well <laughs> it's going to be interesting um thank I you Gary, speak for an hour on this alone and i would love to one day <laughs> well, yeah, thanks, we can... I'm, I'm humbled really uh, i listen to you i miss you guys every day i get so much knowledge from you and and this great warm feeling you know, i appreciate it awesome thank you let's uh take some question from my moderator today co-moderator maxime he has some very interesting questions to ask to all our speakers maxime um, your turn yep thank you sonia so uh, questions from my side first of all i want to um, I'm, I'm really interested in IoT and um, 5D technologies. And I um, analyzed some um, Kaggle uh, indicators uh, that uh, indicate how market will be grows, how market size will be changed am among the five years. So, and I'm really interested uh, that's finding some common things that's it around 25 percentage in IoT and 29 percentage in 5G technology. So, and I want to ask you some questions that uh, what uh, you find, what the common dots between these technologies because because we have uh, the same rates. Yep, uh, Gary, my question to you, uh, what uh, you find the same, uh, some general uh, in these technologies, some, uh, Oral uh, dots. I missed part of the good. You broke up for just a second. I think it was one of the key pieces. So could you repeat the question, please, Maxim? Uh, yeah, no problem. Um, I'm, I mean, I want to clarify some connection to dots of these two technologies, IOT and um, 5G. Yeah, so, I mean, the situation, let's, again, let's keep it simple. I mean, we need to have the bandwidth to be able to get the Internet of Things to work. So now we finally have 5G and coming 6G, right? Like like China has today in mm -hmm. some locations. So it's about the speed. We need to have that speed in order to get those devices to work properly. But think about it. Think, Maxine, how, how much in a farm, you know, a farm, you know, I grew up on a farm in Pennsylvania and we had the fields, you would plant the fields, you had to understand how much potassium was out there, et cetera. But imagine having sensors out in the field connected with 5G. Imagine how much different a, a, sign, a farmer becomes a scientist, right? It changes things. And then a farmer, the AI becomes the scientist and, and starts to change things. So, the, but the internet of things, the, the 5G is really that portal, that bandwidth to be able to help us uh, manage our lives more efficiently and effectively and to change things. So we're in a vert, this is, you know, this is like a, um, the, it, it's like the beginning of the 20th century right now, literally. And it's exactly the time when electricity was introduced, AC with Tesla. And that's in the next 30 years, we'll see so many changes. We're gonna live a lot longer because we're gonna have all kinds of, of uh, sensors inside our body you're going to have smart pills that tell us exactly what's happening at any point, in any time. Farming, manufacturing, think about it. Literally everything. So it's this is an incredible time to be alive. Talking about smart pills, I was looking at a video that pills travels through inside your gut, uh, take pictures, and captures cancerous cells. It was interesting when I saw that. Exactly, Sonny. That's it. I mean, think about it. Sarum knows a lot better than I do. But when you have, you know, adenine, thymine, cytosine, iguanine, and they start to, is that right? Sarum, right? And they start to um, um, start to metastasize, bad things happen. But imagine you, if you could course correct and then think about it. So now not only do you course correct, but you can attack exactly those cells. Part of the problem with cancer is you get a lot of good cells because you got to overdo it. So imagine having those, that's where the future is. It's incredible, really. So smarts, I mean, you know, when you go to the doctor, how do you feel? Does anything hurt? Well, now the situation is, it's not about feeling, it's about knowing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, thank you, Gary, for this uh, clarification, for this insightful answer. So my same question for Kartik. So Kartik, what do you think? What is the connection, the dots between IOT and uh, 5D technologies? It's about uh, 
like like Gary exactly said, for me, uh, IoT is the engine, and 5G and artificial intelligence are the two drivers that are going to drive and make this engine successful. 5G is necessarily. I, I, I'm working on a project with Airbus, which necessarily generates 720 GB of data per second from the different computing networks for that data to travel and define a very simple variable called automatic SNAT deployment on the 19,000 Airbus aircrafts that fly around the world, which necessarily need to read need to reach into each cockpit and determine the automatic SLAT deployment requires a bandwidth and a computing speed that is beyond our imagination. That is what bridges the IoT and the 5G. Necessarily for, both, for, for IoT to work speed. And 5G is necessarily what Fast and Furious was. It started with Fast and Furious 1 and every time it got bigger, better and bolder. That sets from primarily about your uh, computing speed. You never knew 5 years ago, 10 years ago, but maybe 1G was good. 20 years ago, a floppy was good enough for us, but today, even a terror Thunderbird is not good enough. And that's that's the way our demand's been increasing. So 5G is going to go into 6G and it's going to even get better the moment we get into drones and the moment we get into refrigerators, from drones to refrigerators being operated by technology, data is going to be a primary driver. So it's it's the bridge between that. But in, in my opinion, the connecting link between the two and the success of the two is about accessibility of this technology, Maxim. Building technology is part A. Making the technology available is part C, B. And democratizing the technology is part E. Because primarily, while the world's 5% of the population which creates this technology has the dollar to create the technology, but the 95% of the population, which different parts of the world, which is primarily meant to use the technology, does it have the accessibility? Does it have, for example, IoT is, is a beautiful functionality, but, but does Sudan and Nigeria, or maybe for that matter, even Ivory Coast or Sri Lanka and India have the bandwidth speed to deploy an IoT to make sure that it succeeds? Because that's where the problems are. That's where the number of people who need this technology are more. So it's not just about building it. It's about making it available, making it available at the right cost, at the right time, in the right measure. And which is where a lot of startups would start building or bridging the gap. Thank you, Kartik. It's a really interesting concept. Um, so also having some question uh, regarding the cyber security decisions. So previously, I've analyzed a lot of uh, startups and um, uh, came to conclusions that uh, cyber security in frames of IOT solutions is one of the um, famous, one of the um, some hype solutions. Find uh, by which factors uh, it was demanded. So, Vandana, could you uh, share your view on this? Sorry, what was your question, Maxim? Cybersecurity uh, in IoT. Yep, okay. uh, it's all about cybersecurity in IoT and why it's so demanded uh, as never. Uh, see, secure, cyber security is very important. Uh, you look at it this way that, uh, uh, you know, uh, how much of technology has changed uh, in the coming years. Uh, you know, we everywhere we are located very easily on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Twitter. Uh, you know, uh, there, there is no way that uh, people cannot find information about us. Even on Google, almost uh, if you type any name, you can get a lot of information. So I think security, uh, cyber security is very important. We don't want too much data to be gone out or our privacy to be leaked out uh, in the open out there. Uh, yesterday, we were on a smart cities talk where we were talking that, uh, you know, how important it is for certain aspects. Like, uh, you know, if people are throwing ga garbage, we should catch them on the cameras. Uh, and, uh, you know, that kind of uh, uh, thing or, you know, people eating in smart buses. Uh, they should be caught uh, and you know these kind of things or people driving fast they should be caught by the cameras but then other than that uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. of course nobody wants to be visible while brushing teeth or uh, you know uh, and other stuff so i think uh, you know it's very very important uh, that uh, we take into consideration how much of the, um, you know, security um, and how much of the data we are actually spreading it around. So uh, I'm not sure, um, like here, 5G in India is doing really well. 
but how much of the technology is going to come up in the smart cities how much of this is going to be futuristic uh, you know i am not sure about that but then of course cyber uh, security is a risk you see in instagram also uh, during the lockdown many teenagers had these issues wherein uh, you know they were uh, putting their energy uh, in unproductive manner so everything got uh, you know leaked out very easily uh, i think these kind of uh, education needs to be provided that you know how much we can share and what we are sharing how to use social media in a productive manner to our teenagers and young adults and also to all of us uh, you know as to how we can keep it uh, you know at the same time market ourselves or position ourselves or whatever we are posting but at the same time keep our security and privacy intact so to add yep. to vandana maxim you are opening up as you move into an iot on a 5g network be it a 5g 4g whichever network you are opening your entire ecosystem to multiple stakeholders all the way from your supermarkets to your cctv camera holders to your refrigerator guys to your uh, video comp- video calling services to your bus services to your uh, rtos you 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 leaking information you giving access into it which not only breaches privacy on an open ip but it also allows intrusion primarily into uh, intentional mal- malfunction which not only causes security cyber security but it also co- co- leads to physical security as well so a very very well defined ip structure with firewalls and multiple security layers governed by the user or governed by the end user or a service provider is absolutely necessary before 5g or maybe even 4g based iot is democratized something that what carrefour has done something what uber has done on its network in terms of creating protocols to make sure that uh, differential route accesses are not being provided is is the need of the hour i don't know how successful people have been but definitely i wouldn't want somebody to know what pizza am i eating and uh, who's sleeping in my house yep thank yeah. you karthik thank you vandana for your answering so that's all from my side sony thank you so much maxing for your questions great questions okay now i've got questions <laughs> as well <laughs> so what kind of new developments are we seeing um, new developments of technology innovations in iot and 5g and who are the leaders in the space uh vandana so uh, sunny in india jio is the leader here in 5g and uh, uh you know these technologies but uh, of course this technology is very futuristic i was really studying about it uh you know since morning on this topic i have come across a very good uh, health uh, uh you know uh, health platform wherein it is made for old people who are staying alone it is one of its kinds it's not even made in usa yet uh wherein at the press of a button uh you know whether it's on your phone whether it's next to you any uh, you know emergency can be provided to the old people so i found that uh, kind of technology very very futuristic and uh, interesting but uh, coming to 5g i only know jio is the best in india uh, i am and airtel is also doing uh, it uh, but i think jio has come up with greater technologies here i am right. uh, typically my house is at the ground floor we had lot of issues when we shifted here and uh, when we switched to 5g everything became fine so uh, you know when the basements uh, the signals can reach uh, through 5g and uh, it's very effective initially i had problems with stream yard uh, then i found out it was my internet connection so uh, the moment i switched to 5g everything has become fine so i think it's really really futuristic i'm looking forward to more such technologies you never know what uh, you know technology keeps changing every 3 months so what is coming next and what all i have to learn it's quite amazing yeah thank you for sharing those use cases but uh, i'm going to touch base I'm, i'm going to touch base on a particular specific sectors later after this uh, question i uh, yeah. after i round but yeah great insights there uh, vandana uh, gary your insights about uh, new innovations technology innovations in the space and the leaders that we see in the us Yeah yeah so well you know worldwide just some of the usual cast of characters so Cisco 
Huai G Digital Siemens, of course, their IoT group out of uh, uh, Munich, IBM in New York, um, SAP. I mean, these usual players. And then you got SoftTech, Oxygile New York, Styles, Styles Lab, an IoT group in uh, San Francisco. So you've got the usual cast of players. But again, it's, you know, who's going to keep up? And who's going to be part of this evolving trend? So the large companies know if they don't do it, they're not going to be in, you know, they're not going to participate. And it's going to either eliminate their business or dramatically reduce their business because we all are going to be moving in uh, this direction with IoT and 5G and then 6G. So in terms of those are the cast of characters. And in terms of um, what was the rest of the question, Sonny, was to, so yeah, I mean, obviously you've answered who are the leaders, these are the global players, uh, new developments and innovations. Yeah, sure. Well, so you know I'm into quantum computing, right? That's yeah. something that's really interesting. So when quantum comes into this thing, uh, our lives will fundamentally shift. And Karthik brought up a very valid point. I mean, cybersecurity needs to really be focused on right now because we need to have that protection. If not, nothing good's gonna happen. I mean, think about it. And we talked about, so on one side, we talk about cameras in the house. We talk about all kinds of things. But I know uh, my Alexa in the house. And one of the reasons I disconnected it, it, I was walking in the house and it went off. It was listening to me talking to my wife, speaking to my wife. And that made me really nervous. And I really, I, and, and one time at night, I don't know if I was sleep talking or what, but it went off in the middle of the night. And so you know, they listen to everything all the time. And so we talk about being nervous about uh, privacy and security, but I mean, I had it in my bedroom and I I started thinking, this is like Dumb and Dumber the movie. This is like the dumbest thing I've ever done. Now you got a camera in the house, you got a, you know, you got Alexa or Siri, nothing good's gonna happen. Now imagine if somebody hacks it. So on one side, we talk about these things. On the other side, we eat up the opportunities. We say, oh, we don't want, you know, we're concerned about privacy and security. And as soon as we do that, we're on Google, Googling a search. <laughs> so what's, what's wrong with that picture? Or we're using Gmail. So, you know, we need to go in Facebook and LinkedIn. So we need to go down through. And the, the real big question is who owns the data right on that side of it? And how do we go on down? How do we go down through and make it fair for everybody? Because now, as we have, you know, the Fitbits of the world, and we're collecting all kinds of data on us. Who really owns it, and what are they going to do with it? So that's really where the question goes. So it's it's a great time to look at how the value of your data, how much it's worth to you, and then how much it's worth to everybody else. And are you going to be willing to pay for services like Google if that, in fact, you know, you start telling them they got to pay, how much are they going to charge you to be able to use their services? So it's an interesting question. We're used to things for free. I got to tell you, we did a Google-like search for the personal cloud. We have uh, several, 19 patents actually, uh, with David Yang. And people just didn't want to pay. They said, oh, why should I have to pay? Google gives it to me for free. They don't in your personal cloud though. They give you the, the, to be able to set, search the web, but they don't give in your personal cloud. So we just have to adjust our, our mentality. But it's it's here to stay when you combine it together with uh, IoT, the data coming out, and now 5G. It's a powerful, powerful combination. Yes. And please, Alexa's not in bedroom. <laughs> exactly. Well, you don't think about it, though, because I thought, oh, this is kind of cool. I want to ask, you know, what uh, what the temperature is in the morning in San Jose, California. And it was like, oh, this is kind of cool. But then this is kind of stupid. <laughs> so I was like, this is too weird. You know, <laughs> I felt like I was in some kind of a bad movie, you know, <laughs> it's like Skynet or something. <laughs> Again. Right. Talk about something that ruins a mood. That have Alexa in there at the wrong time and it goes off. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh gosh! All right. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Gary, for those uh, insights. And yes, privacy is a big issue we, when we live in this connected world. Um, so, Karthik, over to you with this this, this question. So, while uh, Vandana and Gary spoke about the major developers, I would say the users. 
and one of the biggest users that I've seen is Amazon. Amazon's use IoT to a level that I would have never imagined. With more than 700 warehouses across the world, Amazon today operates its warehouses purely on an IoT basis. AI plus an IoT mixed together, which pre which which pro programs its robots to its efficiency, driven by the order management system. So one of the best use cases is, is Amazon. Another use case that I've started seeing off late is the road and transport authority in this part of the world where I live in. What Gary was talking about managing the traffic lights and managing the frequency of buses and trams is now being done, bases the congestion on the networks and bases a Google seeding or Google clouding of how traffic patterns are moving. Starting from the Middle East, starting from UAE is now it's likely to spread across the GCC as one of the use cases. So while technology gets developed, its utility or its utilization in this part of the world is big. Carrefour was one of the first ones to build onto the grocery model of uh, IoT, as I spoke around uh, around six, seven months ago, where from, from your refrigerator, once your refrigerator is linked to your Google Cloud, Carrefour is able to go and get, in, get an understanding of what kind of products are missing, what kind of products are coming to an expiry. And on in France, they've already piloted with more than 300,000 consumers already hooked onto this network. So use cases in the, in, in the ecosystem are already building. I am not too sure about the success, but I'm sure voice-based technology itself through the IoT is what is going to drive the future. So yeah, there, there are multiple use cases. Great, great. Thank you, uh, Amazon, sharing with us the Amazon, um, Amazon case, use case. Thank you. Karthik, uh, sort of. Yeah. Uh, so I got, I got two, three examples to share with you. And then I'll comment on the cybersecurity bit. So when initially the cars did not have Bluetooth speakers, I mean, Bluetooth uh, stereos, we used to use a dongle to put it in the USB so as to connect our phones with that for playing songs and all. So I bought two of them for my wife's car and myself. And I realized that all of them come with the passcode of 0000. And sitting in my car, I could I actually accidentally connected myself to my wife's car stereo. So uh, now this was against. I mean, she was she wasn't aware of it. But then, <laughs> but then I can do it at a at a uh, at a red light signal. If some if I see somebody next to me, I can actually put zero 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 and connect to that person's stereo and play something funny, some music that that person would be suddenly scandalized of what has happened to my, my stereo. Now, the other example I'll give you is the initially when the smart TVs came in, they also had the same problem that if you're on the same Wi-Fi network or if you can log into that particular network, you will be able to mirror your screen on that particular smart TV. I have done that to my neighbor once. Okay, just to tell them that, see, your smart TV is not that smart. I'm smarter. Okay, you can do that. Now, uh, with the current set of smart TVs, you cannot do it because they have learned their lesson. Well, what I, the point I'm trying to make here is whenever a new technology comes, it takes care of the current holes in the security and they plug them. But they cannot always imagine the creativity of people and what can accidentally happen uh, as a hole in the security. And it takes some time before these use cases get exposed and the companies are able to plug in. So uh, do expect initial hiccups. And no matter that we have developed a, uh, developed the technology by leaps and bounds, there will be security holes. It will take a few years probably to plug all of them and to curb the creativity of people either by accident or by, or by malevolent intentions, I don't know. But then it can happen. So uh, probably like Gary, uh, I'm not going to put Alexa in my bedroom initially. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but maybe uh, maybe when I get enough assurance that okay yeah uh, maybe 99% holes are covered so, so Alexa goes into the living room then where does, he, where does she live actually in my house I have unplugged it completely I am not too sure of it right now it's oh. given me a beautiful idea I'm going to do this next time when my wife shouts at me I'm going to have it programmed to 911 so it'll have the cops come into this <laughs> I love this idea guys this is a path breaker for me today does she, know and does she know that you speak on VCTV I'm gosh I'm sure she's watching it as well <laughs> there you go Friday 
<laughs> when the cat is already out of the bag. <laughs> you are supposed to go to the pub for some drinks, right, Karthik? Yeah. It's boys' night out. It's boys' night out. Okay. I don't think it's going to happen after this. <laughs> <laughs> I have a message still. No one's knocked the door. So, yeah, I'm safe. <laughs> Gosh, funny. All righty. So, yes, there's a lot of issues to. I mean, obviously, technology has made our lives much more easier. Hey, but a lot of Sunny, issues. Sunny, I have yes. a question to Sarab. Now, you were smiling when you were talking about turning on the radio. Did you ever do it with somebody alongside of you? Because that would have been really funny. In fact, what I would have done is I would have gotten Jarvis from Iron Man and put it on their radio. <laughs> and look at their face. That would have been a great video. <laughs> yes. I agree. Sorry, you, did, you, did, you did it, didn't you? You went by somebody. You did. <laughs> See, I told you. He's like a kid. I told you, Sonny. He was smiling. <laughs> So it's not <laughs> <laughs> no, man, what, here's the doctor. What is this good in life other than pranks? <laughs> That's great. I love it. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. We still have some time. And there's very interesting discussions coming out of this. Okay. Talking about lifestyle and comfort. Uh, how does IoT and 5G help? With the economic growth of the of the of the country, like obviously it has it brings a lot of ease in our lifestyle and comfort, as we all know. But beyond that, economy, how does it impact the economy? Uh, Vandana. Oh, sorry, you want to go first? You were just raising your hands. Please go first. It's yeah, okay. I was. I wanted to go first on this one. So, uh, like in uh, another of this uh, VCTV program about food and all, I had mentioned that I'm also a certified hydroponic farmer. So just trying to do one up on Gary, who always claims to be the farm boy. So uh, I had designed one uh, hydroponic farm uh, in Pune itself. Like, so the, the guy whose farm it was used to live out about 40 kilometers away from the farm and was having a hard time going there every day. So we automated it with a lot of sensors and all, uh, all IoT technology, of course. So today the situation is that that farmer needs to go on his hydroponic farm only twice a week. Everything oh. else is completely controlled in an automated way. And he gets his, the updates as a SMS on his uh, mobile phone. And if something goes wrong, he may need to rush. That's, a, that's an exception. But normally, he needs to go to his farm only two days a week. And remaining all, all the functions of the hydroponic farm are being controlled by IoT devices. So you, you I would, explain what is a hydroponics farm. I, I mean, obviously, I know, but just for viewers. Yes, uh, so it's a kind of vertical farm where the uh, plants, uh, food plants mainly, are grown in water, and it's in, they're enclosed in water pipes. So there's constantly flowing water which contains the nutrition. There is no soil involved, so it's completely grown in water, and uh, we are able to uh, uh, we are able to control the quantity of water flowing through, the temperature of the uh, water, the temperature of the room, the humidity and the uh, amount of nutrition that is going through, plus uh, how much water has to flow uh, into the roots of the plants. So since all of these things are controlled artificially, we can control them using IoT. And if, if anything goes beyond the prescribed parameters, the alert is sent to the farmer who can then either instruct one of his workers or can come himself and check it out. But but the big deal is that that person has been now freed for five days in a week to go and do his business development and do remaining tasks of a business and is not really tied uh, with a leash to his farm that he has to be physically present there every day. So that, I think, is a major, major change in the way farming is done and seen and will have the impact on that on the economy. So does it only apply to hydrophonic farming or it can apply to any farming, any sort of agricultural so it can apply to uh, like traditional agri agriculture, it may not apply 100%, but still there are a lot of things typically controlling the amount of uh, amount of urea, amount of uh, other uh, nutrients that are thrown into the in, into the farms, 
plus uh, insecticide use of course uh, i'm talking about organic insecticides want to be politically correct here so <laughs> not talking about the wrong kind of insecticides but uh, whatever is being sprayed their quantity and everything it can be controlled to a certain extent not as much as hydroponics but yes uh, to uh, to a significant extent i would say right correct thank you thank you sora uh oh, kartik is not here and so let's take it from vandana <laughs> So, uh, Sunny, definitely, uh, if you look at it this way, uh, I have mentioned in my previous talks as well, when uh, demonetization came into uh, India, we all needed, uh, we all understood that why is PTM so important? Why is digital payment so important? And we got used to this, uh, you know, digital payment system automatically because we had no choice. Uh, I can tell you that like, um, lots of people bought handphones uh, during lockdown, computers. They wanted to, lots of people installed Geo 5G uh, at their homes. Uh, you know, everything became very easy after 5G came into, uh, you know, we had Netflix uh, and we had uh, really uh, some good shows on Netflix, which I watched during uh, the lockdown, which I wouldn't have seen otherwise. So uh, I think, uh, you know, everything has really, really changed and uh, life has become pretty much easy for me because I was traveling, wasting time in traffic and running here and there and only able to do four to five meetings in a day. Now I can do 10, 20 meetings, uh, you know, and still remain fresh because I'm not so physically tired running here and there and doing this and that. And I just order my grocery online over the phone. Uh, you know, I just do everything uh, at the press of a button. So I think, uh, uh, you know, the need of handphones so that of course many people bought that many people bought the 5g connections uh, many people uh, you know started using these apps like netflix and using digital payments so the everything around us changed so of course the economy uh, also changed and uh, you know everything started moving uh, so i think it was a blessing that lockdown came in as well uh, it taught us a lot of things like zoom uh, you know, the other day, Gary also mentioned that nobody knew how to use Zoom before and everybody was so skeptical. What is Zoom? Why should we use it? And then automatically when COVID came in, everybody had no choice to use yeah. Zoom and then AirMeet and then StreamYard and then, uh, you know, all these Microsoft Teams and these other platforms. So uh, I think so naturally everybody had some, uh, you know, I think Zoom has some paid features and uh, uh, you know, all these other platforms. So if we use the paid features, naturally, uh, it is giving back to the, uh, you know, economic growth as well of the, uh, you know, place where we are. So I think uh, it's really important. So many Android phones came in, new types of Android phones came in. Uh, and then I, uh, you know, I bought two laptops for my kids during lockdown. So, uh, you know, you can imagine the kind of, uh, uh, expenditure happen over this technology and gadgets and uh, I, I bought an Alexa also and of course uh, uh, the only thing where Alexa what does is it connects to my computer and then refuses to disconnect and then I cannot hear anybody if I'm on stream yet at times so then I have to say Alexa disconnect so I think I am, <laughs> I am so, loving it. so those things uh, uh, you know <laughs> but other than that, you know, I mean, everything has become easy. You know, I can, uh, you know, Alexa has so many songs, uh, you know, I can't even imagine, like, I can just play anything. I can Google anything on Alexa. So it has its advantages and disadvantages. Everything has advantages and disadvantages. The only thing is, I think we need to be educated uh, how to use it in a productive manner. Like um, Saurabh mentioned about the Bluetooth devices. Uh, you know, if you look at it, uh, when we are driving and we need to make calls and do other things, it's very comfortable. But if somebody is breaching our data, uh, you know, by just pressing four digits, zero, 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 I mean, it's quite a risky affair. So, uh, 
you know all these installing those kind of uh, uh, you know accessories in our cars as well i mean that also people pay for right so absolutely so we have some uh, real life so, use cases coming from vandana kartik would you like to add something i'm just conscious of the time yeah, so, so I, yeah. i look at it in two small pieces one is because internet of things and 5g improves our efficiency it allows us to deploy our time in far more productive which means overall efficiency of workforce increases by 20 30% more importantly these two business lines have opened up an entire new ecosystem of businesses and production lines that need to be built 5g has made gaming industry content creation social media and even content streaming that much more easier which has brought in multiple competition competitors in the place content creation is an industry on of its own gaming has become an industry of its own primarily boosted by 5g as a network today electronics consumer durables automobiles uh, all your devices are getting into the iot space which necessarily needs to be built into it which creates a completely new production line so your overall economic growth get stimulated with a new level of latency coming into business that's how i look at it cool thank you uh gary yeah so i mean this what we are talking about is this digital transformation so it's it's all around us and 5g and the internet of things think about it pretty soon your your roof will be able to say your roof is leaking the first thing is the alert the second thing is it'll be able to start to call uh contractors to come in and fix it and negotiate a price. So that's where we're really gone. So this is part of the digital transformation. I know in the beginning as Vandana said at the beginning of the pandemic a year ago when we started to really move actually about this time VCTV, right? <laughs> when yeah. we started to move to VCTV uh, with Kyle actually yeah. I was first, but uh, from my standpoint and but we really get have gotten to a point where we are in this digital transformation and these are just points of light within the digital transformation so the internet of things of course what does it do it optimizes our life and make it more efficient it optimizes companies look at what's happened with the supply chain during the pandemic you know we laugh now sunny doesn't it seem a long time ago with the toilet paper thing right yeah it's just like it was a, a dream a bad a bad dream right you in fact yeah. today, people probably say i don't believe it i don't even remember it you know that seems like a long time ago but in yeah. reality is because we didn't have insight into our supply chain so having the iot to be able to sense all kinds of different things from the point of um in a agriculture side at the point of the farm all the way to the point that it's out to the retailer is a very beautiful situation but it's all about optimizing what's going to happen over the next couple of years you're going to see a whole rush of all kinds of iot all around us it'll happen what what's going to happen it'll be a uh, step by step and so we may not notice it but it's coming into our lives as we speak now 5g people you know use their phones jesus it's a lot faster than it was before yeah. now the situation enables sensors jesus some things that uh, you know uh, my refrigerator is talking to me you know the refrigerator i'm not saying now but <laughs> but <laughs> the refrigerator is talking to me and then of course adjusts you know the temperature needs to go up it starts to change things and listen there's more food in here i can lower the temperature down because uh it doesn't need to be as high so those are the kind of things that are upon us and over the next 5 years 10 years we're going to see this completely change you know it's it's going to be amazing actually so everything from so i've seen some of the the uh, next generation uh self driving uh, vehicles i actually had a chance with magna star which is one of the top contract manufacturers in the world they make the z4 supra Uh, Jaguars, etc. But I actually had a chance to see that that model with one of the VPs of the group, and it's unbelievable. I mean, they reconfigure themselves. You know, you go to the airport, it changes the seating patterns. There's a lot of incredible technologies. We're in a beautiful time, but what we got to do is, you know, one of the things from my standpoint is we've got to go out and make this world a better place. We've got to look at things like climate change. Oh, there's my basset hound. She just came to visit me. <laughs> uh we got to look at climate change how we can really impact the, the oceans you know we've got a lot lot to do we need to really band together to make this world a better place and having the knowledge and the data allows us to be one step closer to doing that so i'm really excited about it of course we all are excited about it all right uh let's take one last question because this is very important with the closing remarks 
So do we, are there any startups? Do we have any startups already in this space? You know, so Vandana, I mean, if you could start with this and then we take some closing remarks before we wrap up our Friday. Uh, yeah, definitely. There are not many different kinds of startups that are coming in this space. And I'm looking forward to, uh, uh, you know, work with them. And uh, uh, not only that, uh, uh, you know, uh, you will see that soon we will be on 6G, 7G, and I don't know what all technologies might come up. So be prepared and be progressive and you need to switch every time, <laughs> uh, be prepared for change. And, you know, uh, that's the only way we can progress and we uh, need to stay positive in all manner. And uh, as usual, very happy to be here and happy Friday and always having good laughter in your session, Sunny. Um, so the, I love the Alexa jokes and the Bluetooth jokes. Uh, <laughs> thanks for sharing those. Thank you, Vandana. Same here. It's a chance, it's an opportunity to take a break, smile, you know, a little yeah. bit chill. So thank you so much for sharing those jokes as well, like, you know, um, Alexa and sort of whatever you did. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Alexa knows. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we don't. We don't know if it was wife or somebody else or what. <laughs> so yes, sort of. <laughs> you know, you know, I can imagine a time when you, you know, you've got Alexa or uh, Siri in your bedroom, and all of a sudden it comes up with, "Let's take a walk on the wild side." Music comes up. It anticipates what's going to happen next. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I feel so we can Beepy and scary. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, uh, from startup point of view, Sunny, I have had uh, three companies pitch to me in the last two weeks in the who are into IoT. Right. But uh, what I also got to know from them, and this was education for me, is that they are actually struggling with the manufacturing of uh, the the components of of IoT. So, for example, the sensors, uh, the kind of standards they use to communicate to any central servers and machines. Uh, I got to learn that LaRaWAN is a, is a standard which is being uh, seen more and more widely for communication in IoT devices. Otherwise, what is happening is there are companies who are making sensors, uh, building a complete uh, network. And if after one and a half, two years, the startup goes bust, then the uh, organization which had used it, they have to junk everything because uh, their standard was different and nobody else is using it. So uh, this is a very typical uh, curve uh, which occurs in technology that the, whenever a new technology comes, the communication standards, the making of uh, ports and everything is not standardized. I mean, it took us like three, three dec decades before we came out to the USB, right? So the same thing is there in the IoT industry right now. So while all the promises there and all the all the beautiful fantasies we, we are thinking about they are there but right now uh, probably it will take them some time before they get their act together in terms of hardware and communication standards so um, all the best to the industry but it's early days right now so, so all the sorry so were the startups from india yeah they were startups from india and uh, they had very promising products but I also got to know of the downside uh, through their pitches only because they mentioned that we use a standard which is interchangeable or um, multiple vendors use that standard. So if, even if we go bust, your entire network will not uh, have to be junked completely. So uh, then I, of course, asked probing questions and learned all this. So uh, all I'm saying is uh, it is going to make a huge difference eventually. but they also have their initial teething troubles right now. Right. Good to know about that. Thank you, Saurabh. Karthik? So quite a few startups that uh, I know of in this space. Like I told you, there's a startup in the wireless charging of car, fueling of cars that's already uh, working in this part of the world. A lot of startups in subcontinent India that are working on content development on 5G. 
a few startups in India, primarily from Gurgaon, one of them that I've been uh, talking to now is uh, into creating internet protocols and communication uh, blue blueprints for connecting with refrigeration, air conditioning and car devices, primarily to help them program from remote distances. But like Saurabh was talking, it's about the connectivity nodes that still haven't been streamlined. So while startups would exist, it's the manufacturers that need to start coming in with standardization to give you a perspective. The way we have a USB, the HDMI, and the C ports available, the same yeah. protocols need to be built on these devices in, an, in, in a virtual world so as to make sure that standardization remains, uh, con I mean, it remains constant. But in terms of creation of those blueprints, there are multiple startups. I haven't seen startups in the technology development, which is the hardware development space yet, considering the kind of investment that it takes. Maybe there would be in some parts of the world, but I haven't seen. But again, a sunrise industry, and uh, I wouldn't call it only a sunrise industry. It's a game changer with, uh, with uh, bandwidth. Uh, we would practically start living in the digital world. So there's a lot for everybody to be here. Right. So it's only the big players right now. Uh, big players in the technology development, the hardware technology, hardware development, a lot of small players, regional players in software development and uh, in, in connectivity protocols and in content creation. A lot okay. of small players, a lot of small players. Okay, cool. Thank you. Gary? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I actually co found um, an IoT company that does a remote uh, patient monitoring. Um, actually, she's a... Uh, Indian from Stanford University. She's an MBA from Stanford. And so, I mean, I see it every, I see him every day. Uh, Kartik is right. It's the hardware, the capital cost to be able to get started on the hardware side uh, cost a lot. So most of them are using existing sensors and existing technology. Although that being said, yesterday, I had a uh, company that's an IoT company that actually has developed a hardware solution. So, you know, that, that happened, um, that happened uh, yesterday. They've actually have a like a ring on steroids device that combines uh, combines uh, being able to ring, being able to have the video, and also uh, some other features that are, are quite interesting. So I like that actually. Um, I'm seeing them every day, and I think that you know more and more people realize that it's not about um, get it, gathering the data; it's about what you do with the data, and how you analyze that data, and what decisions can be made. If we get into unsupervised uh, AI, right? Thank you. That uh, brings us to the end of the Q and A se session. I mean, so let's take some closing remarks before we wrap up the week and get into the weekend. So, Sora. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Sunny. Uh, I think if if everyone has seen the movie Avatar, uh, at the end of it there was that single gigantic tree to which everybody was corrected, and it was a uh, it was a cosmic wisdom, cosmic uh, actions. Everything was uh, together. I think that's what we, that's where we are heading to, and uh, eventually this 5G and IoT uh, and AI, all these things, thing, three things combined, will show me the Avatar tree. At, uh, maybe in another three to five years and yeah then all of us will not need to ask questions to each other on vctv because all of us would know the all the things at the same time oh wow interesting time in interesting interesting love to see that and what's your weekend looking like sort of oh it's th this one is better than last one yes yeah i <laughs> hope so you. no work right like <laughs> all the time thank you sort of uh okay gary we see someone Another yes, that's, that's my basset hound, Sunny. Hello. She's my basset hound. Yeah, yeah, she's she's here with me. Now this is a this is a great time. We're really excited about it, about all the uh, data that surround us and how we can make our lives better. So, you know, intellectual capacity is evenly spread around the world, but opportunities are. The goal is to be able to create jobs and opportunities so people can take care of their families wherever they are. I mean, we're putting our money where our mouth is. We're in Africa today. We're going to places uh, other people aren't spending a lot of attention to be able to find incredible talent to be able to tackle some of these problems that we've discussed today. So I'm excited about it. You know, you can reach me on LinkedIn. You can reach me, Facebook. Uh, send me an email, Gary at gsdvs.com. We're looking for incredible companies that want to go global. And so uh, reach out. Thank uh, definitely. Thank you, Gary. 
and uh, yeah, good to see her. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Karthik. Thank you so much. Friday afternoon, maybe just about 10 minutes before I head out to the golf club. Yeah, but uh, in terms of uh, my belief, I think this is where the beam me up Scotty moment begins. At some point, we would have an energy to mask conversion coming through. If internet can make my car work remotely, if internet can order milk for me, it definitely can make me move from Delhi to Dubai in a minute's time. And that's what I would look forward to. In terms of reaching me out, please feel free to reach me through VCTV, through LinkedIn, through social media. I'm always available. Happy to support you. Thank you so Fantastic. much. Thank you, Karthik. Thank you, Vandana, Saurav, Gary, Maxime. Thanks for your time and contribution today. I hope you all have a great weekend and a, less, a little bit less work <laughs> as compared to the previous. Like, Vandana, you are not working one, uh, Saturday and Sunday, I guess, like yeah. the last weekend. So, yes. Yeah, so, I'll be better. back. Good. I'll be back next Monday, next week. I'll see you, maybe some of you again next week. Till then. Keep smiling, stay happy, and stay connected. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.